much. So thanks, Howard, very much for everything you've done for today. And uh, over to you. Thanks, and thanks, Paul. And afternoon to Emmanuel. He's just greeted everyone. That's great. Um, what I would like to just remind you, I know Debbie has been putting quite a bit on, on LinkedIn, and I've put the post up there is Veronica will be holding a refresher course. She's going to be doing it on Saturday, especially for Paul. Uh, Paul, both of the Pauls, PG and PB, um, to actually to write the to write the CDMP. So please check out the LinkedIn um, for those that have already done the training. It will be a free refresher, so it will be good to see you. And yes, uh, we continue with our data literacy. We had the first one session we had with EIM managers. And then we had, uh, last week we had with Data Citizens and we did some statistical analysis. And maybe I should have a quick refresher on how many people remember the distributions and um, just to confirm that you guys and finding the balancing point, the, the mid and the mean. Um, and today we're talking about data management professionals. Uh, what I have done, everybody, is I've added a Excel spreadsheet, something that I've been using for quite some time uh, to build my CVs. I don't know about you guys, but it's really frustrating every single time you ask for a CV and uh, a lot of the times you are applying in some cases for a different job. And what you don't want to be doing is, for example, talking about everything data quality when you need to be answering about metadata. So you almost need to filter that CV uh, and ensure that you're presenting it in the right way. Okay, so uh, please, uh, the template's been provided. There, there are a lot of different areas to it, so if you'd like to uh, download it and follow me, it's currently, um, it's got all my data in, so uh, just beware if you, when you download it, you'll have to reset some of the, the targets and, and stuff like that. Okay. All right, so let's progress. Um, we've been through that. We've got uh, no special prize today um, other than the assessment template. And let's get going. All right, data literacy for data management professionals. There's the anyone, the, the link is in the chat box. So if you guys, if anyone doesn't have it, please give us a shout. Um, and you can download it and start looking at it when, when I work through it. Uh, just to tell you that um, ST and Paul, we did we did a data management maturity assessment for for one of our customers, and we used almost the exact same template. And I've applied that template now to almost be a professional assessment or a CV. Okay, so um, if you want to, you can also make use of it for your uh, DMMA for your company or for your department, whichever one that you you want to do. Okay, so we are talking about data literacy. I do feel that uh, as data management professionals, we also need to pay attention to it. It's really not just uh, the data citizens or the data, you know, the, the business people that need, need to have a data literacy check. We need to check ourselves in where are we in on our path. Okay, and it is really helpful to be able to produce a CV um, I'm sure you've seen some of the CVs on LinkedIn. They've got lots of infographics. And I'm hoping with this, you can do exactly the same. It's got some really nice and powerful visual, uh, visualizations. And if you, if you are aware of Power BI, you can publish it to powerbi.com. And from there, you can download it into, in a PDF or in a PowerPoint presentation. And you can send that out to potential... No, no. Um, okay, so you can do it as well. We can upload it and then download it in PDF form and it actually looks quite nice. Um, so let me go on to the next one. So what is a competency framework? This is core, this understanding is, is really important to us. Sorry, um, are you presenting on the screen right now? Yes, is it not showing? We can't see it. Oh, shucks. No, no everyone's been quiet. We're still trying to get to it. Okay, are oh, you trying to get to the, the Excel spreadsheet? Okay, sorry. Um, maybe just going a little bit a little bit further back. This is what we'll be talking about today. We're going to be talking about what I refer to as KSCA. Um, I'm using the European um, competency framework. 
and they talk about knowledge, skills, competencies, and attributes. Okay, and I'll explain and give you definitions. We want to also talk about a professional career pathing. How do you define your pathway? And then how do you build a CV? Okay, that you can keep on maintaining um, and you can keep on adding to so that when people ask you for a CV, you don't go into a panic for two, three hours trying to build a CV that makes sense, or you send a CV out and it doesn't have the latest projects that you're working on. Okay, competency framework defines the knowledge, skills, and attributes needed for people within an organization. Okay, so each role, each job profile will have its own set of competencies. Okay, um, and I don't know how many of you are out there that you've ever done this assessment on yourself to say, well, do I actually fit the roles or am I way, in, am I way better than my roles and so I need to get a better job profile? And certainly with some of my experiences that those job profiles aren't even defined properly. They may be defined at a generic level, like an M4 or a management or whatever it is. Um, and, and so we haven't got a well-defined set of competencies. Okay, so to develop this framework, you, you really need an in-depth understanding of the data management roles within your business and what is required. Okay, so again, some quick definitions just to make sure that we don't get confused with uh, data information, knowledge, and wisdom. Um, it's close, but it's not exactly that. So the definition that I'm using here is that knowledge is the outcome of the assimilation of information through learning. Okay, so uh, a good uh, under definition of of uh, or, or example of knowledge would be a learning engagement like this webinar that you're attending. So it is really helpful that you guys record all of these or record that you've attended all of these um, and to be able to say, you know, I've been doing this learning, this career upliftment. Um, and certainly when you're in the professional arrangement, like a PR engine and stuff like that, you have these continuous development points and, and you've got to keep on recording it. So um, we're happy to do that as well, where we've got meeting attendance and we're starting to collect all of the data and the details about that and we can share that with you as well. Um, the last time I, I, I looked at it, I think we had Quinele Nyoni, he's the, the leader of, of attending of webinars and one day I'll show you, I'll show you some data stats that we're keeping there. Okay, skills on the other side, that's the ability to apply the knowledge. Okay, so now I'm just trying to find my mouse so I can, I can highlight that. Okay, so skills, we're talking about skills. We need to apply the knowledge. We need to use the know-how that we picked up in this knowledge area to complete tasks and solve problems. And what we can talk about here, and, and I've separated that to have cognitive skills, and that would be that you've passed the CDMP certification, okay? That's evidence that you've got that certification. So training is one thing, but it's not the certification. We've got to then be able to pass the certification at a cognitive level, that's just writing the exams, answering the multiple choice, um, and then the practical would be doing case studies. So I'm sure you, so a few of you guys have uh, attended our how to model data, the how to govern data where we provide case studies and that constant performing of those case studies will continually validate where you are in your skill level. And then we've got competency which is the proven ability to use your knowledge, skills and abilities. Okay, now that's where, we, we, where, we, where I came up on this idea of using a maturity assessment very similar to what we do with our organizations to understand how well we're doing or how competent, how effective we are. I'm doing the same thing for professions. So performing an activity. So can we build, as a data architect, can we build an enterprise data model or a data flow? And can we adhere to the standards and are we, be, are we able to deliver more than what the standards ask? So are we delivering top quality data flows and enterprise data models? Um, and I refer to this as our professional data management maturity assessment. Okay. 
So exactly the same things that you've learned in terms of doing a DMMA for your organization, you can do one for yourself. And I've certainly given quite a few people advice of the best way to put together a CV is every single time you perform an activity and deliver a deliverable that's in the DM box, note it down. Okay, so that when you when you do need to present your knowledge and understanding and your competencies, you've got a list of all of those. And that's exactly what this Excel is doing. All right, so let's keep on going and I'll share that with you. So this is what we're talking about. Now, the same way that I do risk assessments for an organization, I believe we can do a risk assessment for individuals. And I'm sure some of you guys are getting a little bit worried or concerned to say, what do you mean a risk? Why, why would I have a risk as a professional? And that's a good question. Um, so let's see how we do that. So the same way that we define the maturity levels within the DMBOC, I've got maturity levels for the individual. These are the definitions. I'm not going to read them all. But what we're wanting to do is uh, enable you to progress from being aware um, which means that you're making an effort to find out about data management. You desire more knowledge uh, that may develop in, in response to personal needs. Okay, so you may be asked to do a, a BI system, and this is the first time you've done it, and you've done an Excel pivot table, and now you think, oh, fantastic, I, I've got some great insights, but how would I build a BI system? How would I use self-service analytics? Um, yes, the, the slides will be shared and the recording as well. So we then want to progress all the way up to an influencer, which is um, a person that makes an effort to influence others in the community to support data management programs and best practices. So that's almost an influence. And now I'm sure you guys have heard of social influencers and things like that, where on LinkedIn or whatever it is, um, companies will actually... Uh, pay you to market their brand or market their products and because you consider it to be an influencer. And Debbie and I were talking about that the other day and she was saying that um, on Instagram, a micro-influencer, Debbie, correct me if I'm wrong, it's something somebody that has 15,000 connections. I know micro-influencer is 10,000 to 15,000. Okay. Uh, followers and then over 15,000 is when you become an influencer. Okay. And then I got quite embarrassed about my connections on LinkedIn where I think I've only I've only got in, I've got 5,000 500 something like that. 5,500. Uh, so we're getting there. Okay. But I'm, I haven't even reached the micro influencer. So one day when I'm big, I hope to influence a few of you. Okay, so these, this is the level that we're doing it. Um, I wanted to just do a quick uh, uh, demonstration on how we need to do it. Um, and it's really this one tab that you've got to fill in, and it's called, it's the target, current, and required competency level. So let's, let's do an example. I hope you guys have got the Excel spreadsheet open. Um, just want to check if you guys, can you, can you all see that? This is yes. This is the graph that gives you an understanding of where you are with your competencies. Okay, so there's a tab there called DMMA assessment. Um, what I have done just to demonstrate to you, I have filtered the knowledge area. So let me remove the knowledge area filter to data handling and ethics. That's that's quite important to me at this point in time, um, and certainly other people like Costa and Christine in terms of change management. So the way we do this is that we have to complete a target competency level and a simplistic point of view there is to say, that's what I desire to be. So I desire to be an influencer, uh, but currently I'm only sitting as a translator or a resource. And by the way, my job, if I want to be successful as a trainer or a model where I need to be an influencer. So let me show you how quick that, that can work. What you do is you filter for data handling ethics, um, and this can be in discussion with me or we can do it together. And we want to say, ah, I need to build a communication plan. 
No, that's sort of one of the areas that I'm not doing well at. Or, or maybe I've spent some time with Christine and I've been able to change from a resource to, or let's say I'm not doing as well as I should be and I'm only knowledgeable because I don't have any evidence that supports me. So in this scenario, I've said, okay, I'm going to, I'm knowledgeable and I'm going to downgrade myself in terms of um, current practices and data handling and reporting. Okay, so I've, I've downgraded myself to say I'm not as good as I thought I was um, and I've, made, I've changed those settings and now I can go to the DMMA review and I want to just show you an example here of this is where I was. So I want to be five. I've only got three and my job requires to me to be a five. And so now if I refresh that, um, you can see the change. I've, I've actually gone down to 2.6 and there's uh, my decrease. So you can see in the radar diagram, you can see I've decreased within that scenario. So it's as simple as that. Um, are they, uh, and maybe just pause for a while just to show you how to drive this. This is uh, basically um, an assessment of where you are, but I can, for example, just look at all of the oversight functions within the data management within the DMBOC. And now this relates to really just the governance, ethics, maturity, or I can look at what are my skills looking like within the foundation that is metadata, data quality, and data security. Or I can look at how well am I doing on uh, data modeling, uh, design, these are the different levels, and so you can keep on going and assessing yourself in those different areas. So really nice and simple to be able to put this together. And then one of the things I'd like to share with you is you can see um, I've registered that I have a risk um, that I need to be at a, at, a, at a certain influencing level within change management or even just knowledgeable, and I haven't got to that level. And the reason I'm, I'm saying it, it's a risk is if I have to perform the task, then I'm currently I'm not capable of achieving the level that I'm that I that I've professed to be. OK, so that's a risk or you may not have got your job profile or you have a job profile and you can't meet that that level. Are there any questions? Is it does it does it look simple enough for you guys to work? Is it something that you'd find useful? Howard, I don't have a question. I'm just absolutely flabbergasted at the uh, connection, the detail, and the kind of ease of use to to um, define our own stuff. Um, it's amazing, really. Thank you for this. Yeah, so so it's it's Christine. I know you and I. We we spoke about it when we when we wanted to put together training for uh, for our BI project that we were on and we were wanting to say, well, where are these different people? What are the skill levels? Where do I pitch the training to? Because what you don't want is to go into a training session and you're training everywhere from someone who doesn't even know how to build a pivot table to someone that you want to teach how to use Power BI. Um, and you need to train at a different approach. Okay, so, so you need to be uh, it's it's really helpful for your change managers and your EIM managers to know what the current competency levels are. Any any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, what is the best way to set your target and uh, not just go for an influencer? Like, what if I don't have what it takes to be an influencer? Or you you don't want to be an influencer, so. Yeah. There are some people that it's probably the worst nightmare to to want to. Uh, operate as a as an influencer. They would much rather be a specialist, um, and they don't have to worry about all the other challenges. So, it it is an important question, and I really like that same discussion that we have with businesses to be able to say, do all businesses need to be at a DMMA level five, being they are optimizing everything they do knowing that to get to that level five, they have to spend a lot of money, employ the right people that can take them there and progress uh, along this journey. So the same way that we, we ask questions about this when we work with organizations and looking at the maturity assessment, we should be asking ourselves to um, say, well, 
do we want to be at this influencing level or am I comfortable with being knowledgeable or a translator to say, I can, I can teach people, I can communicate to business people and I, I, that's all where I need to be. I don't really need to be at that level. And one of the, the, the advice that I give to people when we're doing a maturity assessment is don't try to go more than two ranks or two levels up. Okay, so if you're sitting at a level one, setting yourself the goal of being an influencer in the next year because you want to be able to measure how you progress. If you if you want to be able to get to an influencer in five years' time, please don't set yourself an influencer to be now because you'll fail and you'll be so far off that target that you'll it will just become a point of almost a point of depression where you're saying, I'm not getting there. I, I promised that I'd be here, but I'm, I'm nowhere. I'm still sitting at 1,000 connections on LinkedIn. Um, so be careful of setting yourself too high and getting into trouble. So there's another question. Uh, let's see the question. Who's on? Marina. Hi. So Hi. I am new here. <laughs> First time attending here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to ask you, right, so in terms of um, getting to a, a different level of competency, do you have a certain um, a set of questions that needs yes. to be answered? Okay. okay, so that's part of this assessment. Now, what we'll do in this assessment, I, I may have not explained it properly. So, for example, in the DMBOK, we have a chapter called... Uh, data handling ethics, but maybe I could get a, what, what is the area that you are currently operating in? In terms of uh, the level of competency? No, no, the, 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 the knowledge level. area. So would you be in governance? Are you in architecture? Data, Where, data architecture, yeah. Ah, data architecture. I like that. So when when we look at data architecture and we look at, um, from a point of view of the DMBOK, it starts off with the planning phase. So this is would be, uh, have you developed a roadmap for your data architecture? So as your uh, department, as within your organization, what's your roadmap to develop architecture? Now, one of the things of doing a roadmap, an architectural roadmap is to say, how do I connect it to the business architecture or the business strategy and how do I develop, uh, how do I develop that architecture to support that? Um, so within develop a, a roadmap, I could say, well, I've never done this before. Um, so, so where my current competency is sitting almost at a awareness, I'm aware of what I need to do, and I would set myself the target of um, being knowledgeable. Okay, so within each one of these activities and deliverables, so you can, so I can see that I need to be able to perform this activity and achieve the deliverable. And one of the things that you would do, for example, is if you were building an enterprise data model, you would have a data modeling scorecard and one would be able to assess the quality of your data models. And we would then say, OK, you are weak in these areas of data modeling. Um, I'm sure you, you may have heard we do a data modeling uh, class with Steve Hoberman and we use his uh, data modeling scorecard. There are 10 areas and we can say, ah, you're constantly getting your consistency wrong or your enterprise alignment wrong. So we need to pay attention to these areas and then we would do some case studies or some project experience where you would uh, you would perform those tasks and deliver those deliverables and you would increase. You would then be able to say, I've got that experience. Um, I've been able to perform at that level and here are some of the documents that can prove that I've achieved, that I've done a case study. So. One of the things that I ask for is evidence, and I'll talk to you about an asset vault just now to say here is a almost a portfolio of the work I've done. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. So it's, it's really nice to be able to have practical and meaningful things that you want to work on to say, shucks, I need to build data flows. I need to build data lineages. I need to build an enterprise data model. I need to have experience on building a data value chain. Um, I need to be able to do a data architecture design. And these things would then be able to qualify me from an international point of view that whatever is defined or specified in the DMBOK, I can do. 
and therefore my 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 competency is at that level. So that's what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to be able to compare yourself to an industry standard and say, I know how to do it. And here's my experience. And I, I've got experience to show. Yeah, no, okay. and even the evidence of portfolio. Yes. So, um, so what I've done here is I've actually built something called an asset vault. And especially for, I mean, this is a lesson I learned from Dylan Jones, I really advise you guys, if you're opening up your own company or you'd really like to, to progress as a professional, he actually talks about maintaining an asset vault so that you can demonstrate to people that you have created a data strategy. I have built a, uh, a data-centric architecture. Um, you may not be able to see that, but these are the things that I've been able to build, and uh, here, are my, here is my portfolio, ST. How would that would with that would you handle kind of like NDAs and agreements with clients about the details? So you know you've done it, but you can't really publicly right. share this. What yeah, you, you, what it, you it's that's a tricky one. Um, and and what what you'll see lots of people doing is in some cases they would almost put over a sort of like white art or on on top of the where it's business sensitive data. Or you can abstract it to a level to say, uh, like what I did, I think I did it in, in the first one where I said, here are the, here are the people involved. Um, I can mark them as respondent one, two, three, instead of SD, Paul, Howard, Veronica. So you'd find a way of masking that and just masking the presentation. Yeah, so as long as it's like people can't connect it to the people Correct. or the company, Correct. it's Correct. okay. 100%. 100%. So, for example, a maturity assessment could be quite embarrassing if people were to discover that this really uh, hotshot company has got a data maturity of a 1.5 or something like that. You know, that yeah, may yeah. be very negative. Uh, that's something that you don't want to to get out. So you've got to be careful with, with that type of thing. Good question. But I think it's important that you do it and, and you make that available and almost templatize it, ST, so you can say, all oh, right, here's a template that I could apply to another company. Okay, so especially you as, as a data management specialist that is, is, will be operating across multiple customers, you could then templatize that to say, this is what one would do for different companies. Yeah, not reinvent the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't keep on starting from the beginning each time. Mm, thanks. Christine? Thanks, Howard. So um, moving from uh, target to, to where we want to go, we understand the gap. But um, you were using the example about LinkedIn as, um, you know, the metric for acknowledging that you are an influencer. Yeah. And uh, you 500, only 500, you should be t uh, 50,000. <laughs> You know, if if you looked different, maybe you'd get more hits. Ah, what I'm saying, <laughs> no, what I'm what I'm saying is, um, you know. Um, so let me show you. Time? This is a it's an excellent question. I've actually got a I've got a quick slide to actually show you that. Okay. Uh, in okay. terms of that, so uh, just to just to give you a quick update. Uh, fortunately, it was almost two months ago, two and a half months ago, where I was acknowledged to be one of the top. 200 data management influencers on LinkedIn. So there's actually, a, there was an AI a company that used AI techniques and they announced the top 200 on LinkedIn influencers. So even though I didn't have 15,000, I was still able to achieve that level. So- And that's the point, you know, uh, the targets that we set, yeah. how realistic or accurate are they to what yeah. we're trying to achieve? All right, uh, Yeah. so yeah. Let, me, let me try to take you through that. It's a good question. Um, so I've, I've sort of showed you now how do, how do I deal with acquired, required, and desired. Um, just a quick definition. Acquired is I can prove it. I can show you uh, that, I, that I've been able to do it. Required means my job profile demands this of me, and desired means this is where I want to be from my target, my, my career strategy. I want to be here. Um, and that's quite, it's quite an uh, interesting uh, process and I was actually doing it with Paul Bolton 
uh, we are having to respond to tenders and we need CVs and, and we, we've taken some time to do this and spend time on ourselves understanding where we want to go to. Um, and then I shared a little bit with you about the risk. Now, I wanted to raise this just this quick example of, let's say you're a professional engineer like Esti. Now, if you, for example, a professional engineer is a civil engineer, you would be signing off designs and plans that the structure that's going to be built will deliver the business requirements or will fulfill the requirements of that design. Now, guys, that's what we do as data management professionals. We get requirements from the business and we should be able to say when we've signed this off and delivered this, we will create a system or a data product that will live up to the standard. So um, we're fortunate that we, and sometimes I think we're unfortunate that we don't have to live up to that PRN standard, or uh, I know it's also in the health sector that they have standards in finance as uh, chartered accountants, they've got to live up to SICA, they have those standards. We unfortunately haven't got to that. We're not as mature as that, but I think it's the sort of area that we want to be going to. And as individuals, we should strive for that. Okay, so how do we how do we handle this career pathing as, as Christine was asking? And I just want to share a little bit of what we've put together in terms of a uh, a career path or a, or a strategy. Um, and this is this one over here. So I want to just show you guys in terms of we I'm sure some of you guys have seen this. Let's say you want to be a data modeling expert when you start off. Um, we would talk about uh, going to, and let's sorry, um, we we would start off as as being unaware of data modeling. Um, we we've never done it. We don't really understand it. Then we go on the course with Veronica, and then we become aware. Ah, oh, fantastic! Now we know what the DM box is about uh, data modeling, and I'm sure Christine will vouch for this. I I sort of understand the words, but I wouldn't know how to do it. OK, so I, I know what a relational model is or a dimensional model. I know what third normal form is. Veronica mentioned something about fifth normal form, but I have no idea how to get there. But I, I sort of know I can communicate and I'm aware of it. OK, so from there, we believe you go to the next level, which is what I refer to as a resource level. And that's where you can sit and you've written your CDMP data modeling specialist exam. And then we say we go to the next level is where you receive a international certification for data modeling. That's through the data, the DMI, and we call it the data modeling certification. So we now consider it to be knowledgeable. Then we build a use case for the business to show how data modeling has benefited the business. And then we can say, well, we've now achieved this translator phase stage. We can translate the requirements to business. And then the next stage is we've spoken on an international forum and we've presented this in an international conference. And if we do well and we and we get to the level that we should be doing, we can consider ourselves to be an influencer. If we were able to teach internationally, to teach people, for people to say, wow, I learned something there, that was amazing. You now are starting to get the realms of being an influencer. Um, so, Christine, I'm, I, I, that was a bit of a long journey to explain, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that gave you some understanding of, of the journey that we, we're suggesting you go on and what you can do to get there. Absolutely, Howard. Thank you. Okay. Are there, are there any questions about that? Now, we certainly have that platform designed and we want to do a whole lot of case studies as you progress along here. We, we've developed relationships with uh, companies like the DM Data Modeling Zone, where they're happy to help uh, South Africans contribute to that and open up some spots for us. Is there anybody interested? Niels, I'm sure Niels is, is keen on doing that. Esti? Yes, of course, always. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Okay, so that's the journey. Now, that journey, you may not want to get all the way to the top. So that means just doing a data many, a data modeling case study from a business point of view and achieving a translator may be fine. Or it may be 
getting to a knowledgeable state where you can say that you have an, a specialized industry uh, qualification and, and that's where you may want to be. Um, but it's about how do we get you there and how do we take you to that point? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Everyone's very quiet. I'm not sure. I thought I'd have a few more questions. Okay, so this is what I refer to as our professional DMMA CV playbook. This is what you need to do on the Excel. First of all, you should be doing that assessment that I spoke to you about, the desired, the acquired slash current, and then the required. You can then understand where your risks are. Um, we can then go on to what we co mean completing with a with a knowledge, i.e., submitting your conferences and webinars, skills, competencies, attributes. Remember, we did the thinking styles and strength finders, and then a review of your CV. Um, I'm happy to help you with those type of things and and look at what you've done and what you put forward, um, so that you can present this to potential customers, employees, and and consultants. Um, so I wanted to just share with you, I know Paul's done it. Paul, um, would you mind just sharing your, you did this DMMA assessment for, for a tender that we're going out on. Would you mind just showing yours, that what you've done? Yes, no problem. Uh, let me just share my screen quickly. Is it, uh, there we go. Uh, are you talking to this Paul, Paul B? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, I did want the, uh, the PG to do it, but he, um, he, he, he missed the deadline. He had uh, other important things to do. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, thanks, Howard. It's uh, as I mentioned to you, um, obviously, over the last couple of days, weeks, preparing for the tender and 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 doing the DMMA for for the for the cohorts of graduates as well. Um, amazingly insightful but here's mine my here's my wheel and and this and the spider diagram so i honest i can't i can't boast so the competitor in me is is a bit embarrassed and a bit uh red faced right now because howard's is looking very pretty and very balanced and quite full mine is got i've got a, a huge journey to 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 walk but um since starting the journey with you um you can see some of the acquired is being generated which is awesome and some of the spikes there, like data quality, um, integration, and uh, document and content management, was some of my work history and and all of that. So the governance side, the the ethics, no ethics is yeah ethics is there, management maturity assessment, organisational role expectation, and change management um, are all part of the journey that I've been with you in the last over the last year, Howard. Right. So. That's starting to come together now. As I said to you earlier, shucks, my CV is full of other stuff. Um, I need to really go through it and just pick out where I can co add contribution to this picture because this is a data CV. That's the clear. That's obviously yeah. the clear picture there. And then what I've what's also represented here is, which wasn't my first pitch, as you know. Um, I shot for the stars immediately, and you quickly wound my neck in for me and said, "Hey, hey back off a little bit and and take it easy." And remember the the progression is make two jumps. That should be your sort of your desired jump. Initial jump should be the two. So if you're unaware, you know, jump to 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 knowledge. Um, if you're aware, jump to becoming a resource. So that should be the maybe the target there. So my uh, so 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 working with this today and at getting it ready, I looked at it and saying yes. I my my ultimate desire is to to get really proficient in data governance as a subject and a, and, and a speciality. Um, but, and yes, it doesn't show that here because my next step is let me, let me eat this elephant piece by piece, which is let's start off with the maturity assessment, which I've done. And that's where you can see some of the experience coming through already. Um, also organizational role expectation. There's also a touch on architecture because it starts to feed into the governance and you can see the desire of the governance is also starting to grow. Yes. So I've tried to be, um, instead of just shooting for the stars in all those areas, right try to be sort of responsible with my um, with my yeah. progression, if I can say. So that's what I've tried to illustrate here. And, and then obviously- the nice thing, And the yeah. nice thing, Paul, is that now that you've identified the risks, yes. those are gonna be the things that you wanna go after first, right? So 100%. you've got a list of risks, risks across the deliverables. Now you can say, these are this, this is something I need to deal with and quickly. 100%, so you can see the highest risks there, the maturity assessment, organizational roles and expectations. That's to deliver immediately when I'm helping 
with the the uh, the assessments, the uh, KA assessments, and the thinking styles, and all that that sort of process that I promote when I talk to potential candidates for our courses as well. And uh, I need to be proficient there so I can really get stuck in and help there. So that's the first step, and then the next step will start to build the governance. Um, and I, you'll see a spike there with master data. Um, I just liked Paul's presentations last month so much that I, <laughs> I wanted uh -huh. to jack. Up, I wanted to jack up there. Um, so you, are you saying that Paul's an influencer? Uh, he influenced me, yes, because uh, you, as yes. you know, a couple of years back, you threw me in the deep end on a master data project, yeah. and um, it was it was hectic but awesome. And now listening to Paul's talks, um, it, some of the lights really came on for me. So I'd like to just build in that area. But that's you can see where I'm 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 tracking. I think through this 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 uh, diagram or this uh, graph. Yeah. So so this is just what I wanted to share with everybody on on here is that now that we've got something to talk about, we can actually put a plan together to develop a strategy to achieve what you need to achieve. But Prior to this, you, you probably walk around with a lot of concerns saying, ah, am I really making it? What have I got to do to get there? And, and how do I progress, right? 100%. And, and this is something that you'll remember. We had a discussion with a top insurer the other day, and their biggest comment was to say, ah, we keep on saying that we're at this level of maturity, but I feel it's too um, qualitative, meaning there's lots of sentiment and emotions. Mm. And what we're trying to do here is get away from that, right? So if I've got a set of things that I need to do and I can demonstrate that I can build these things mm. like an ethics or a change management, it gives me a path. 100%. And uh, just, you know, dealing with some of the, doing some of the calls with potential candidates for the training courses, taking them through the storyboard, the data professional storyboard. One of the points there in that journey is the conflict that, that many and myself have in terms of your employer's view of your value, your personal view yeah. of your value, and then ensuring that you have valuable KSCA as you're talking today. And this this piece of work or this study or this putting this together to present now actually started to clear some of that up for me as well. So it's helping me build that roadmap. Um, and you can, you know, you've got you've got the road markings, you know where you're going, which is, which is awesome. Okay. Yeah. Is there anybody that would like to ask Paul a question or to tell him not to be so hard on himself? That's what Christina's saying. Any, uh, any questions on, <laughs> on, on, Paul's, on Paul's diagram? Maybe to answer Christine while others are thinking of a question for me is I, I wouldn't have needed to work so late the other night putting a tent together if I was a little bit more jacked up. <laughs> so, uh, so jacking up on that knowledge area in terms of data governance is is, is top for me there as well. So, yeah. I, I think, I think um, writing proposals should be on this thing as a separate skill because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, writing, it should go on here as a skill. Yeah, it's that sort of roadmap and communication plan and, and just building that thing from the tender request, you would you'd be able to put a roadmap down for them. So yeah. yeah, it's it's a helpful learning experience. And um, I have a question, if I may. Yes. So I can see a point two for all the areas, knowledge areas. What made you decide on going a point three for the um, required now, um, for the um, oversight of data management maturity assessment, and the other one is management organization and role. So what I'm asking is what made you make those two peaks from required based on your um, okay. position? Your, yeah. Yeah. What made, yeah. So as I mentioned, in terms of, of the how to course as well, and looking at that progression of how that work, that piece of work comes together over the days, the maturity assessment in terms of case study, um, apart from all the knowledge and the inputs into it, is the first piece of work that needs to be sort of put down so that we have a we have a we have an understanding of current this 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 picture and then from there you start to talk about your swats and then your strategy um your operating model and on and on and on and i just saw that as the progression for myself maybe being a little bit linear in that or uh, sequential 
um, which goes against my normal randomness. Yeah, that's cool and sequential. I'm not the same. <laughs> so Howard challenged my randomness last week, and I and so I started to think a little bit different, try to think a bit differently, Christine, in that how, how am I going to get to becoming proficient as a data governance uh, specialist or in that area? Um, ultimately, an influencer if, I, if, if, if I've got enough years left. So what is the progression? And, the, and how I did it was I looked at that progression over the how-to course of how that comes together as well and started to build my skill that way. Thanks, Paul. That makes sense. Um, and I think the second one makes even more sense, understanding your business developments, background, and the kind yeah. of role you play within Modelware. So the second mm. one, I totally get, but thanks for that. Mm. Awesome. Okay, so just to just to uh, explain to you guys, this these numbers four, three, two, one, um, those are the levels that we spoke about. And of course, for me to be able to put something onto a radar diagram or, or, or create numbers that allow us to visualize, we, we've got to translate, for example, an unaware goes to zero, aware goes to one. Uh, and so we progress all the way up to a five, which is an influencer. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me let me try to bring it to an end. Um, Paul, if I, I'll just take the screen from you. Thanks, thanks very much, Paul. Thanks for awesome. sharing that. Howard, uh, Howard, you know here, yeah, before you take it to the end. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I was just looking at, I, I'm getting the feeling, how, why doesn't... Um, data warehousing and business intelligence come through very highly and, and big data and, and data science. Is it because they are very technically inclined or, or is there something else going on here? Because I don't see a, a very strong flavor of it. Okay, so this is, um, you will see, if I just go back, you will see that, um, there we go. Um, I don't have any risks in there because part of my level of achieving data warehouse is a 3.75 or a 4. That's where I'm currently. Of course, I would like to get to a 5, but that's where I want to be. Now, Paul, on the other hand, that's not his driver. For him, his, special, his area that he would like to specialize is in data governance. Um, so one could have the debate as to say, well, it may be helpful for you to also uplift yourself within that big data, data warehousing, because that's where deci business decisions are being made. So that should be a core part of, of your focus. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, that's correct, because that's what my thinking was, that yeah. everything is around big data yeah, and data right. warehousing in the data management space. So I, I was just getting a bit worried that if you have data management professionals who are not pro highly proficient or don't desire that area, you know, we, we, you have a big gap, uh, you know, in enabling those technologies. Danae, I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, and that's sort of why I, I did some teaching last week on statistical analysis on that visualization. I do believe, I do believe it's critical to our skills. Um, but you will find certain people that are really excited about uh, the data governance um, and the change and the operational approach to it. But I, I would agree, certainly my recommendation, and, and it sort of depends where your target is. So, for example, if you wanted to set yourself as a CDO uh, or even an influencer and you don't understand big data, you, you're going to be weak in that area and we need to do something about it. Yes, thanks. You, you're 100% correct. Even, even as an architect, you know, we, we list the skills there of data flow, enterprise data models, that's fine. But if you don't understand the decision-making process, everything is about making better decisions within the business. And the end game is the business intelligence and big data. But as we know that Scott Taylor mentioned is, first of all, get your foundations right, being make sure your truth is right and then your meaning. So get your foundations right, then you can progress to the meaning, um, and you just have to uh, play around with that. But nice discussion, Danaea. That's something that I'm happy to have with you guys. If you if you spend the time doing it, I'm happy to sit and, and let's talk about what is important to you. So your desire would be as high as possible within that area, and how do we get you there?
Yes, I think so. Then. Excellent. Look forward to your the result. Okay. So then what I wanted to do is just take you guys through. Uh, we've done the career path. We've shown you how to, now that you've got it, we can climb up to the mountain. We've taken you through the playbook. Um, and then what I've done is I've added these sections to the Excel. Um, and these are the knowledge components. So within the Excel, you'll see uh, a table, which is called conference presentations. Um, and here we've got presentations that I've done and I'm going to be doing. Um, and what I would suggest to you and the reason why I put in a region there is that presenting at an international conference is very different to presenting at a local conference. And um, what you'll see, for example, is the amount of time that I spend preparing for an international conference to that of a local conference, it's orders of magnitude. So whereas I would spend maybe a month preparing for a local one, I could spend up to five months preparing for an international conference. The, the rules are quite different. The expectations are a lot higher. Um, so these are the conferences that I've presented at, the Data Modeling Zone, the Enterprise Data World, the data and the other one that um, we want to present at is the Data Architecture. Um, and then the duration, just to make you guys aware of it, the duration is in months. And then I present in, in my diagrams, I present in years. So you may have 48 months and I then convert it to a three year thing because the years are a little bit easier to read um, and, and preferable in that scenario. And then these are the webinars. So for example, um, this is me. I was a speaker on Data Citizens. That was last week. Here is the recording. So ST, that's the type of thing that you'd have to be able to show people. Um, and I, I also hosted one with Paul where he presented on Master Data, the influencer. And this, this is duration. Um, so that was almost the time spent on that. And you can see where I've been speaking and hosting and and doing different areas in, in as webinars. And then I've got the list of the different webinars, what the organization was. And so it's actually quite helpful um, to build that. Now, this is how I measure it. And just to show you guys quickly in terms of the Excel spreadsheet, once you've completed all of these tasks, there are the pivot tables. You just hit refresh. When you get in there, you hit refresh and it builds it for you. And there's some uh, conditional formatting to say this is where I'm doing well in data architecture, this is where I'm not doing so well, uh, and I can look at getting more knowledge or competency, whatever it is, and then we can visualize that with something like this. Now, what I'd just like to warn you is in knowledge, skills, and competencies, you'll probably find that your numbers around your work experience far exceed the numbers around the learning, so you're going to have graphs and you need to be able to switch off competency as an example. So I want that's why I built these separately. Where if I was just at a at a skill level, for example, I've got five years in this area uh, compared to 25 years or 23 years, 22.58 in this area, uh, they just uh, mess up your visualization. So you need to be able to filter and unfilter and choose your right visualization to demonstrate your what you've achieved. Okay, so there's my knowledge, conference and webinars. Then I go into skills, higher qualifications, higher education, professional certifications. These are mine. So I've done a BSc computer science, honors, elec eng, masters, CDMP, CBIP, that's your business intelligence, data modeling zone. I've got a certification there, textual analytics, big data on, on, on text, and then CDO summer school. So those are the things that I've achieved in the last whatever period or time. And here's my skill manage, measurement. Now, notice that I don't record, regard my electrical engineering master's degree as the seven years that I spent doing that um, as something to do with data management. They influence each other, and, and there's certainly something I benefited from for example, some object-oriented design and learning. I, I benefited a lot in terms of doing data modeling. So it's not throwaway, but I, I, don't, I can't attribute it to a knowledge area. And so the, you're going to have a non-applicable area in quite a few of these scenarios. 
competency. This is my um, work experience. Th these are project experiences. This is what I've got. This is the work that I've been doing across different organizations. And for example, I did with EPSA, I did master data management with Paul. In 2014, we built a financial data warehouse. I worked on quantitative risk master data. That was really exciting and learning. And these are the things and the, what I've had in my career. Um, I've also got data management organizations. Are you a volunteer? Are you working with Dame SA? Uh, whoever it is, EDM Council, are you contributing to fiber? What are you doing? Um, so that also comes into your CV. This is my data management asset vault. I shared a little bit with you on that. Every single artifact, and, and I'm sure you guys are same as me. You have this nice idea on how to store all of your presentations and folders. Two weeks down the road, you can't find it, and it drives yourself insane. Um, what I can tell you is that I built a Power BI to go through all of my folders and then document them all, and then I started the process of tagging, so saying, this presentation dealt with this. It was in this knowledge area by this uh, person. So happy to share that with you as well. There's my competency measurement. And then if you remember, we did thinking styles, learning and, and strengths. We've also done that. And that's how we build the CV and the measurement system. And I managed to get to the end without going too far over time. So any any questions, observations, comments? Do you think it's too much? Is it a, is it is it valuable to be able to communicate your CV with people like that? I think my concern would be it's it's, it's a bit um, detail for me, so I'm not quite sure how you would summarize that in 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 a normal <laughs> in a normal CV. Okay. Um, so what what I would suggest is that remember that um, Paul had that radar diagram of where his skills were, his competencies were. That radar diagram tells an amazing picture of what you've achieved. If people want to go and see your experience, they can go and look at it. What you achieve, what your desires are, where you want to be, and what you believe is required. So you certainly don't need all of this. Um, what what I, what I can show you is a final PowerPoint presentation that if people want to look at the detail, they can go and find it. But at the end of the day, you want to focus on those four areas. How much knowledge do I have? What are my skill levels? What is my competency? And then what are my thinking styles? And you can then simplify it down to almost one or two uh, PowerPoint slides. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I got it. Okay, so so in in a nutshell, how I understand this whole journey is that you basically doing a career planning, right? So if I want to get to a CDO um, level, so these are some of the details in terms of my planning to actually get there, right? So as I mature um, during the different phases, I will also do reassessments of yeah. where I am, etc. Yeah. And then as I plan in terms of uh, the career path that I want to take, I would also look at, so what are some of the foundational um, roles that I might want to take before I get to the actual target right. that I want to be in? Yeah, so, so as I make sure I reassess, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you think of polls, and, and we actually, it was actually fascinating when we did it with a bunch of grads, they were all data scientists. Um, and for example, the data storage, uh, meaning their understanding of databases was sitting at zero. Okay, and you could say to the guys, this is really important to you. You need to be comfortable with getting data in and out of databases, and you need to pay attention to this area. So let's try to make a more well-rounded set of skills and competencies than just highly good at one aspect of the DEMABOC or the DMBOC. Mm -hmm. But does it, it, it does it help you in terms of plotting and, and, and being more strategic about your development? Yeah, I think yeah, it's 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 a good tool actually. 
And I'm even thinking, yet at the same time, you can actually use it when you recruit a new yes, yes. professional in your organization to actually see what level of competency they're at. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then you can place them uh, in the right roles, etc. Yeah, or if you, and I mean, uh, I, I, I'm finding myself in situations, uh, Thomas, I'll, I'll answer you now, where we've got people that have been uh, put into a CDO position, and when we look at their, their competencies in terms of this, they, they're quite low down, and there's some risks. And so mm -hmm. this gives us the ability to say, okay, let's focus on these first. Let's get that competency level up so you can demonstrate to the people that you're aware of that. And that was, that was a very helpful process. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for this. Okay. Thomas? Yeah, so, I mean, going forward, it's brilliant, right? You've got all the detail that me personally, you know, uh, wouldn't have thought of to capture. What? I, so, my question is, looking back, so the, the previous 15, 20 years of my experience, I don't have any of this, like the asset vaults that I can include here. Do yeah. I leave it blank? Or is that you go, okay, you know, too bad you've missed those. Um, you know, what is your take? Do I rather leave it blank uh, and then just continue from today onwards? Or what is your take on that? I would I would leave it blank because okay. what you, and that I like, I, I do the same thing when, when I do a data management maturity assessment within the organization. I basically say, guys, if you, if you can't show me evidence, then we really mm -hmm. into what we refer to as qualitative assessment. We, we're not being, we can't demonstrate our portfolio. Um, what it does do is it, it really gives you a script to say, Jax, I, I need to now start building this asset vault. And that was the lovely thing in talking to Dylan, Dylan Jones, and he helps people with marketing of, of your brand and your individual. These are the things that are critical to you as a professional that you can demonstrate you can show people that and, and what you what you've achieved and it's not just talk it's it's you can back it up agreed yeah the the portfolio thing is is so vital but yeah it's a combination yeah. of of you know a little bit of bad admin and and yeah easiness that you don't keep it so yeah i'm going to go raid my Excellent. hard drives and find all the stuff that i can yeah and, and i can i can share with you power bi has got this amazing facility that can scan your entire hard drive picking up all the documents creating them there and and then just using some of the names you can start tagging oh this document was about this it was this this customer this project and stuff like that so it's it's really a, a life-saving tool yeah no i'm going to be in touch with you about that Excellent. as well Excellent. Yes. Certainly can help you. There's someone else. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Namsa, yes. Hi, Howard. Um, Hi. For me, it was my first time and this was very interesting. Um, I'm interested to join. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start, but all I know is that um, I lack a lot of communication and also not, not really sure where I am right now. And I think this will actually help me improve in my career. So I'd like to start. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to help you. Yeah, um, yeah. We, uh, Debbie can share the first link. We've got three levels of assessment and we can take you through that. Um, and we're happy to sort of take you through the assessment and, and have some of the discussions with you. Okay. Paul is getting really good at it. So so then we can say, okay, now, now that we've got something down, let's talk about where you desire to be and, and how we, how can we manage that progression. Okay. That could be great. Yes, yes, you've answered me. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Christine? Yes. Hi, Howard. Um, I'd like to take you up on that offer. Uh, you're such a BI advocate. Um, you know, there's so many answers. I, I thought Danae was, was asking me why I was missing it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I mean, I would like that because I've got a hard drive and, and the way you've used Power BI for this is just amazing. I know you're a Power BI advocate, but I think a 101, I mean, I don't even mind paying for that. And also um, surfing your certifications and all of that um, and scanning. I sure. think it's invaluable because not only will we be building our um, history, career history, but we'll also be learning yeah. the powers of BI at the same time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's always nice. You know, it's in terms of uh, telling a story with numbers, and then also just uh, keeping yourself and measuring yourself. That's that's the lovely thing about it. And Howard, it reminds me of the one project we were on together. Um, we had an understanding of what the client wanted, but the visualization of the data was quite challenging. So um, yes. I think that is becoming definitely more of a requirement. No, it's a, it's, you, I don't think many of us data professionals can live without it. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's where I come back with the challenge of, of I, I think as professionals, we have to learn how to, uh, the basics of the statistical analysis, how to present it, how to represent it, uh, and how to share it. Any other questions, guys? Great, Howard. Thank you so much. All righty. Uh, anybody else have a question? We'll be on LinkedIn, and uh, you can obviously ask your questions there. If you would like a, a copy of the recording, please also post it on LinkedIn. And um, we look forward to engaging further on this subject. So thank you, Howard, again. And looking now, even looking more forward to uh, next week again. So uh, great to see everybody. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.